Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is Dystopia by Dreadbox. Dystopia is, of course, a, if I remember correctly, an ancient Greek word uh, meaning a, well, it's absolutely the, the polar opposite of a utopia, uh, where, of course, well, utopia is this magical, uh, ideal uh, environment, whereas dystopia is, of course, the, the absolute opposite, uh, being a miserable place to be in. And I feel that that's a big misnomer for this great module. Um, because this is an absolute beast and even though this is only marketed as a noise generator or a beast crusher and a filter it can do so much more and I hoped that this uh, video will do this uh, great little module justice um, so I'll just dive right in and I uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the ride so for now I would say uh, hope you're sitting down hope you're strapped in because uh, here we go so here we have Dystopia. Uh, this is, of course, as mentioned, the third of the chromatic series uh, of drag books that I'm reviewing. Um, so the first one was the, well, violently pink colored ataxia, uh, followed by the almost ochreish um, euphoria, dark yellow, whatever you want to call it. And now we've got Dystopia, which is a, a suave kind of let's call it salmon pink. And again, there's no accounting for taste, but I truly love and I, I, I applaud the initiative that, well, Dreadbooks took with the Chromatic series and truly bring some color to the Eurorack space. But I'm fully cognizant of the fact that this is of course not for everyone. But still, one thing that all of these Chromatic modules have in common is that they're like the, that like the Transformers, there's more than meets the eye because they are very versatile modules. So even though Dystopia is marketed or um, well announced as a noise source, a bit crusher and a filter, it's essentially much more than that. So what I want to do in the uh, coming, well, <laughs> in the coming minutes, hopefully, is to show you what you can do with the dystopia and I might overlook some things uh, but please uh, bear with me I'm uh, I, I'll try to do my best but if I overlook anything just uh, drop a line in the comments below or drop me a line uh, uh, drop me an email uh, send me a tweet anything like that um, I can only grow from feedback right um, so without further ado let's uh, dive into dystopia um, so what dystopia has it's got an internal noise source. And any time you connect anything to the external in, you essentially negate the well, the noise source and it is well processing anything yet you well push through it. And then all of the outputs are essentially either based on the noise or they're based on the input. And you've got three CV controls uh, inputs for uh, uh, crush, AKA sample rate, I might say, uh, and for pink and for blue, uh, which would then be, uh, <laughs> in the case of pink, it's the cutoff frequency for the low pass filter, and the blue one is the cutoff frequency for the high pass filter. <clears throat> so let's, um, let's dive right in. So what I wanna do is I want to let you hear what everything does, but I also wanna show you because I feel that uh, visualization does help uh, with these more complex modules. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the blue outputs and I'm then going to pass that into Buff Jarvis so that I can actually mult this uh, in a buffered way, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect this straight into the output here. So you'll start to hear something noisy. So what I can then do is I can apply that high pass filter, essentially suppressing the lower uh, frequencies. So going from a white noise to a, to a blue noise all the way up there until we almost have no noise left. So that's one thing you can use. 
Then you also have the same thing, but then for the low pass filter. So right now the, the filter is completely closed and we can open it up gradually and you'll start to hear more of a pink noise appearing as in more of the lower frequencies coming available all the way up until you get again your nice white noise back. So that's great. Then let's go into the the bit crusher. So right now as mentioned the source that this is working on is the well the noise that's generated internally. So what the actual bit crusher does it takes a sample of the value at a given interval and then holds that. So essentially what we've got here is a, a, a noise fed sample and hold unit, but then one that goes into audio range. So what we do is if we're, I go into this one and right now this is only sampling, well, every so often, as you can see. But if I then pass this into the Expert Sleepers ES9, you'll start to see something. Let me just change the scale right now. So we essentially have a sample and hold there. And this is again something that we can use. So let's just connect this. Instead of that we are listening to this, let's use this as an input for the owner and then get the output from the owner and pass that into the vivisect. So we have that sample and hold approach. If we then turn this up ever so slightly, we are just increasing the frequency of the sample and hold, so the sample rate essentially. So if we then go into the higher frequencies, the higher sample rates, we're getting something that's already getting into audio range. So instead of just listening to what the owner is doing, I'm just going to connect the actual outputs from the crush outputs into my mixer again. So. So here we have that sam sampled noise. And this is of course something that I immediately recognized as the sounds that were used in early video games like, like in the 80s, early 90s for explosions. Beautiful sound if you ask me. So then we get to the gate. So again the gate is depending on two values, well, actually on three values. So what it does is it takes the value of the input, in this case the noise, at a, at a given sample rate, of course indeed set by the bit rate or the sample rate right there, and if it's above the threshold that you set with the odds slider, then it gives a positive value. It opens the gate, so it gives a plus five, uh, plus five volts. So if you put this right there in the middle, and you get the bit rate, something like that, and based because the, the input is now noise, this is of course going to be a random gate value. So if I change the timings on the scale a bit, you'll see that this is quite random. So that's that's rather nice, of course. If you then go into the audio rate again. Nice, right? So if we then look at scatter, scatter is essentially the same as gate, but instead of 
just returning the um, uh, what's it called again? Just the uh, the uh, the digital signal, the uh, the zero or one or the zero volts or plus five volts. This is now returning if the gate if this gate is high, it's not returning that high signal, but it's actually uh, returning the actual um, source. So in this case, the white noise. If we then change the bit rate a bit, so now you can actually hear the noise only being passed in when the gate is high. So that's, that's, that's quite interesting. They can do great things with that. So that's essentially all the things that you can do with the internal noise, um, the internal noise source. So what I want to do now is I just want to flick this switch on the owner. So we're going to use the owner as an LFO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the triangle output and pass that into Buff Jarvis throw one of the outputs of the buff Jarvis into the expert sleeper so we can actually see the signal we're working with. Let me just make sure that we have a nice, there you go. And what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna pass that LFO signal into the external in. So again, as mentioned, we are now no longer using the, the noise source. Uh, we're actually just using the LFO that we are passing in. So if I then go into the crush, let me just turn the sample rate all the way up. So right now, the signal coming from crush is exactly the same as the incoming triangle wave, because this is of course sampling at a very high sample rate but if we then turn this down, you'll start to see the actual triangle getting some ragged edges. Here we go. So instead of having a smooth triangle, we now have a, well, a stepped value there as well. So what I'm now gonna do is, I'm, I'm again, I'm gonna use the output of this and I'm going to use that to set the full proctive in on the foundation and then I'm going to grab the sine wave from that and put that into the vivisect. So again all the way up we have a very smooth LFO but if we then lower the sample rate where we get the actual ragged edges That's nice, isn't it? So let's do the same thing, but then we're going to grab the the gate. So again, we're going to get a a digital signal from this. As you can hear, this is just high all the time. So that's not something that we truly want to have there. So I'm just going to disconnect the foundation for now. So what we have is we right now let me just show you if i zoom out a bit on this one here we're getting a continuous high signal there and if i then raise the threshold you're going to see something very interesting so right around now it's going to give a high gate if the value is positive and it's going to give a zero gate or a or no signal if the value of the well the LFO is low and then of course the funny thing is that essentially by moving this up or down we can modulate the width of that pulse so from a very slim signal to a very wide oh that's too wide there you go 
So essentially what we've got here is pulse width modulation. So that's great, of course. If we then do scatter, you can actually see what scatter does, where it actually slices the the incoming signal based on that reference value. So let's uh, lower this. So now we get everything, the whole. And if we then just raise this a bit, we get a zero value when it's below the threshold and, it, and you get the actual value if it's above that. And if you then put that right around the middle, you're only showing the positive values. And if you raise it a bit, you're going to get it like that. So again, you are modulating the width of the actual signal. And this is something that we can use if we want to get a, a pulse width modulatable complex uh, wave shape, of course. So that, that's something that we can truly play with. So let's um, switch from a CV signal to a VCO signal. There we go. Let me just change the scope timings there so we can actually see what we're doing. So again, as mentioned, so right now we're no longer looking at a LFO signal. This is now an audio signal. So let me just connect that real quickly. There you go. And now you can also see the actual audio spectrum being influenced by this. where we're actually pulse width modulating the signal. You can see them on, on, on all scopes. So then also do that for the gate, where we have the, uh, the pulse coming in. Let me just change this, the, 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 there we go. So what we now have is we've got a, a pulse wave which is pulse width modulatable and which, which actually goes through zero as you can see it's just a great little thing But again, keep in mind that we can still play with the sample rates because right now we're sampling at the highest possible uh, frequency. And if we change that, you see that we are actually distorting a lot of the signals there. Because of course, again, the, the frequency is the same, but the pulse width is completely out of, out of whack. And of course, if we lower the sample rate below the actual frequency of the, of the sound, we get crazy things. And we, if we are in the same range as the sample rate, we get really strange and interesting behavior. But again, it's something that we can work with. So then let's have a look at the actual bit crushing. So here we have the actual sound. And this is of course something that's really interesting because you see that even at the highest sample rate, you already start to see the uh, the jagged edges uh, of the, well, of the, of the triangle shape there. So this is of course something that is of course, well, it is what it is. Uh, we can't expect the, the sample rate of this thing being that extremely high that we can actually sample each and every step uh, within that. Because of course, it's still an analog signal. So essentially, um, you can only get a true triangle wave if you have an infinite uh, number of, sam uh, of sample points 
at any given time, which we've, which is of course not possible. So this is the well the limitation of this of this module, but also a physical limitation of nature, of course. But if we then lower the sample rate, you'll start the you'll start to see the edges becoming more and more ragged. And you'll start to hear a lot more harmonics coming in. And right around, if you look at the at the spectrum, you'll see that the actual E2, that's the, the, the bass note that we're working with, if we get into that range, you'll get it crazy things. I love this. This is of course great for all your uh, uh, <laughs> sonic adventures that you might have. So let's have a quick listen to the to the filters. So right now the, um, the low pass filter is all the way down. We can open it up. And we'll see how that triangle wave transforms into almost a sine wave, just this, the, the single bass frequency right around that time. And then it just collapses. I love that. And let's do the same for the, uh, for the high pass gate. So all the way closed. So we got, we, we're, we're not really getting any, anything out of it. And we then just open it up. And as you can see, we are unable to open it up all the way. So we still have this, this slope kind of uh, wave shape that we have to work with. But again, it's all the charm of these, of these filters. So this is of course something that, these are all the things that you can do with uh, the, the actual dystopia itself, but you can then of course also do all kinds of other things. So how about we we actually use the the low pass uh, uh, filter as a little low pass gate if we just throw a pulse into that. So let's see. I'm just going to grab a pulse from from uh, from Pam's. See if we can do that. Just do it like that. But we can also, of course, grab an LFO uh, from, in this case, a taxi. Let's uh, do it like that. You can do the same thing also with the um, with the bit rate, the sample rates. Something like an elastic ball or something. I like that. So with scatter. So the the actual possibilities with this topia are of course endless because on the one on the one side you can use this in all kinds of matters whether it's it's a noise source that you can tweak and, and make sure that you get the right noise out of uh, you can use this as a as an audio mangler, you can use this as a CV mangler. Um, you can use it as a bit crusher. You can use it as a um, as a pulserizer. You because and and you you can add pulse width modulation to any sort of well uh, wave shape you throw at it, and it's still also a very capable 
um, high and low pass filter. So this is one of those modules that, well, in my humble opinion, deserves a, a spot in everyone's rack. And of course, yeah, it might not fit your rack's aesthetic, uh, but still, give it give it some some good hard thought because this is of course as all of the chromatic uh, modules from dreadbooks this is extremely attractively priced and even though it is extremely affordable it's still built like a tank it's extremely durable it's uh, i can't find anything uh, wrong with the build quality so this is this this is getting my stamp of approval and I'm just so impressed with how much functionality they have been able to well, cram within one one of these modules, while at the same time making it very easy to understand. Um, it's not far reached. It's it, it's never becoming uh, troublesome. It's very logical and self-explanatory. And yeah. I can't find anything wrong with this thing. <laughs> so before I start uh, rambling on about that, I think this is a great time to uh, go back to the studio. So uh, let's go back and wrap this up. So uh, talk to you in a bit. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this video on Dystopia by Dreadbooks, whom I have to thank for uh, sponsoring this episode. Um, as mentioned, I'm truly in love with this module. It is as the rest of the well, chromatic modules, it is more than meets the eye. It offers a lot of bang for the HP, and at the same time, given the affordability of these modules, a lot of bang for buck as well. So I truly understand that maybe the, the aesthetic might not be for everyone, but I recommend everyone to look beyond that and see the absolute value that this module brings to your rack as well. So for now, I would just say, well, again, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you've got any feedback, any recommendations, any suggestions, uh, just drop them in the comments below. Drop me a line at jesper at themodularclubhouse.nl and feel free to join our Discord server. Um, we have more, we have weekly meetings there with Eurorack influencers, with Eurorack uh, makers, with people within the Eurorack sphere. Um, we've had Jeremy from Re Means Recording on a couple of weeks back. We've had Alex uh, Myla Melodies on. Uh, we've got people from uh, from from Super Synthesis, from Nobula, from all of these Euro uh, Eurorack makers on the show as well. So feel free to join. And we also have a great community there. So uh, absolutely no reason not to join, but uh, absolutely I'll leave it up to you. Um, as always, I always want to point out if you want to support this channel, uh, we have multiple ways of doing that. Uh, the easiest is of course to use the, well, the affiliate links below. They won't cost you anything more when you want to pick up your next module, uh, but a little percentage will go towards the channel. Uh, you can also of course consider uh, becoming a patron or just uh, buy me a coffee as well. Just look at the links below. So for now, again, thanks so much for uh, watching and I hope to see you for my next video. Up until then, stay safe, stay healthy and enjoy life. Take care. Cheers.